Really, no matter what you do, I don't care if you're a movie star, a famous singer, a janitor, a pastor, an office worker, whatever it is, a stay-at-home mom, sometimes you just get tired of doing what you're doing. Come on, don't you? Well, you know, you don't even really need to feel bad about that. That's just human nature. And uh, I'm very diligent and disciplined about my time with God and my Bible study and do it every morning, first thing. And last week, I had two days, Monday and Tuesday. I just didn't want to do it. <laughs> I tried to read the Bible. I just was like, it was like nothing was making any sense. I talked to the Lord, but I didn't really feel like going through my regular routine. And, you know, I didn't feel bad about that. There would have been a time when I would have felt really bad about it. But sometimes you just need to take a little break, and then you come back, and things are fresh again. Now, I want you to listen to me. No matter what you do, no matter what people you're involved with, no matter what church you go to, no matter who you're married to, you're always going to have some things that you don't care for. That's part of life. So we can't focus on what we don't like, because if we do, we're going to be in big, big, big trouble. But you focus on the whole. You see, to do anything, I want you to get this, to do anything, to be married to anybody, there's going to be parts of it that you don't like. One time I got to focusing on everything that was wrong with Dave. God told me to make a list, put on my heart, make a list, write down everything about Dave you don't like and everything you do. And I'll tell you what, I got over my problem real quick because the things I liked was so much longer. And I believe somebody here today needs to hear that because you've been focusing too much on the wrong thing. What's wrong with your kid? What's wrong with your job? What's wrong with your church? What, you know, what's wrong with you? You know, you don't even need to focus on everything that's wrong with you all the time. You're changing. God's changing you. And the Bible says that we are to focus on the positive things in life. God wants us to be full of zeal and enthusiastic. He likes fire. Fiery people and, you know, how... How do we expect to get anybody else excited about Jesus if we don't have a little bit of enthusiasm? Now, I'm not asking you to giggle all the time, but we can all smile. Let's try it right now. <laughs> smile at me. Boy, that's, it just brings the whole atmosphere in the room up about a notch. You know, we really do need to learn to smile more in life. You know, it's amazing. If you smile at people, they will generally smile back. And if we need anything in this world, we need some joy because everything out there is negative and pulling everything down. And you know what? The job of doing the right thing is ours. Everything we do, God's interested in. And we serve him in everything that we do. And you can be a lot happier about what you're doing, even the parts of it you don't like, if you will live with that thought in mind, I'm doing this for the Lord. I'm not doing it for man. I'm doing it for the Lord. And whatever we do for God, God will always reward us at the right time in our life. <laughs> the other night, <laughs> I don't know why, but I, came, I got up to go to the bathroom and I came back. I just felt kind of feisty, so I kicked him. <laughs> and he kicked me back, and I kicked him. And I laughed. I said, you're 83, and I'm about to be 80. And I said, here we are, kicking each other in bed. <laughs> well, you know, you need to, don't, don't get dull about it just because you've been doing it for a long time. Do you hear me? You need to, you, you need to do things to 
keep yourself stirred up. And a lot of that has to do with your thinking. It has to do with, and you can think things on purpose. One of the greatest examples I can think of about enthusiasm is the first time I went to India, the first place they took me was to a leper colony. We were gonna be feeding the people that day. And uh, one of the lepers, part of his fingers gone, part of his toes gone. And, you know, they got it rough. I mean, they just, nobody has anything to do with them. And it's a very easily treatable disease, but they don't know that. So they just do it the old way. And one of the lepers came over to me and he was so excited. He said, I want you to come and see my new house. And so I went with him, and his new house that he was excited about was a hole dug out of the side of a hill. So all the walls and the floor was dirt, and the only thing in it was a hammock that he slept in, and over here in this corner was two or three dented pots and pans and a couple of old beat-up dishes. And he was more excited than a lot of Christians that I see that have big houses and three cars and great jobs and a wonderful church to go to and a pillow top mattress to sleep on every night. Come on, we need to get over ourselves and be, a, I mean, we need to be overboard appreciative. Come on, thankful. Psalm 100, verse 4, be thankful and say so. Thank God and thank the people in your life that make a difference for you.